morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other health care practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen Drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we welcome your calls on the bright side. We are here for you. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition and nutritional supplementation and herbal, and skin, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and if you'd like to participate in the Longevity business, if you'd like to make some money, Selling Longevity products, moving Longevity products, helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you always wanted to be a health coach, if you like the world of nutrition, if nutritional supplementation has changed your life and you want to pay it forward and you want to make some money, please consider joining the Longevity business. Consider uh, exploring, at least, the Longevity business opportunity. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You don't need to know a lot about nutrition. All that matters is that you want to know about nutrition. We'll teach you about nutrition. We'll teach you about nutritional supplementation. We'll teach you about business. Longevity is about lifestyle as well. You learn sales strategies and and personal development strategies. Longevity is really about personal development. Call 866-735-2470 for more information. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself. 866-735-2470 or sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. Click on the join the team link and be part of the team for a one-time $25 fee. Welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're talking about my favorite, or we'll say the second, my second favorite bodily fluid, which is bile, blood, and then bile. Bile is a detox fluid. One of the uh, most important ways that the body uh, cleans itself out involves a process called glucuronidation, which is basically allowing poisons to get into the bile more efficiently so it can get dumped out of the body. Glucoronidation. Glucoronidate is it's a derivative of sugar. It's a derivative of glucose. Glucoronidation is one of the ways that the body gets rid of old estrogen, for example. It gets rid of drugs. It gets rid of cigarette smoke toxins. It gets rid of, of, of food toxins. Glucoronidation is basically a little tinker toy piece that gets stuck on estrogen, for example. We'll use estrogen as our, our example of our, uh, as an example or a prime example of a chemical or molecule that's cleaned out of the body through this whole process. And when I say estrogen, I'm talking about breakdown products of estrogen, so-called metabolites of estrogen. Metabolites mean breakdown products. The breakdown products of estrogen are extremely toxic and extremely dangerous and associated with all kinds of health havoc in the body. These breakdown products of estrogen are sticky and glucoronidation makes them less sticky. Think peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter is sticky, jelly isn't. 
Glucoronidation makes the peanut butter more like jelly, so it rinses off your knife, i.e. it gets into the bile more effectively. That's basically what we're talking about here. One of the most important things, if you want to reduce your, your likelihood of disease states, if you want to reduce your, uh, um, lose weight, if you want to reduce your risks of uh, autoimmunity, if you want to reduce, reduce your risks of cancer, one of the most, if you want to slow down the aging process, one of the most powerful strategies you can use is to help your body process estrogen. And I'm not even talking if you have a full-blown estrogenic issue like PCOS or PMS or infertility or breast cancer. I'm talking about just slowing down the aging process. But certainly if you have any of these really big-time estrogen problems, fibromyalgia is a classic example, it's the most important, probably the single most important thing you can do. If you have fibromyalgia, the single most important thing you could do is help your body eliminate estrogen. There's lots of ways to do that. We talk about that all the time. Probiotics, very important. A fiber, very important. Helping your body uh, digest fats and esen using essential fatty acids with things like digestive enzymes and pancreatin and, and uh, your ultimate EFAs, very important. But none of these strategies is more important than helping the body dump estrogen out in the bile by using glucoronidation upregulation. That is helping the body glucoronidate. And I hope nobody's getting intimidated by that word because I know it's, it's a mouthful because it's really, really important. If you're dealing with infertility, PCOS, breast cancer, endometriosis, uh, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, autoimmune diseases of any kind, as well as fibromyalgia, which is like a poster child for problems processing estrogen, there's a good reason why 8 out of 10 fibromyalgia patients are women. Estrogen. So if you're dealing with any of these health, uh, health issues, consider stimulating your glucoronidation. Upregulate glucoronidation. How do you do it? Lots of ways to do it. Cruciferous vegetables are one of the best. All of them. I said this so many times. If, if I was a woman, I'd be doing cruciferous vegetables every single day like medicine. Broccoli every day, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, cabbage. These are powerful anti-estrogenic foods, or I should say pro-estrogen uh, clearance foods. They say sometimes anti-estrogen. It's not really anti-estrogen. They help your body dump out toxic estrogen. If you're a chemist, by the way, or if you're technical, they're called catechol estrogens. That's the term they use, catechol estrogens. Basically, they're breakdown products of estrogen that is they're more talk, way more powerful than regular estrogen. Soy, believe it or not, that can be beneficial. Even though soy has some estrogenic properties on its, uh, of it, on its own, it does upregulate glucuronidation. Green tea, one of the all-time great ways, along with cruciferous vegetables, probably green tea, uh, tea in general. Actually, you know what? There's a, there's a kind of tea, there's a really interesting tea called red bush tea or rubios tea. That's spelled R-O-O-I-B-O-S, rubios tea or rooibos tea. Uh, this kind of tea, you don't hear a lot about it, although in the herbal world it's kind of getting more and more popular. It's made from an herb called red bush, honey bush. Roy Bush tea is the technical name, or is, that's the name you'll see. Usually that's the name that you'll see. It's got some really interesting healing properties and detoxification properties, and it will upregulate glucoronidation. It's anti pretty interesting stuff. It's an anti-inflammatory. It can act like uh, aspirin. If I had arthritis or any kind of joint problems, I'd be sipping on rooibos tea all day long. You're not going to get a buzz from your rooibos tea. There's no caffeine. It's a decaffeinated or it's an uncaffeinated uh, herb, but uh, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get a whole bunch of benefits from uh, from drinking rooibos. What you could do is you can take uh, you can get rooibos tea bags on the internet. You can uh, you can actually blend if you like caffeine. You can blend rooibos tea with. Uh, with your favorite tea, with green tea or whatever tea you're using, just a tea bag of each and put them in water and kind of make your own little blend. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Spen, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We'll get to your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. 
five days a week and 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or uh, benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can get our uh, blog and videos and news stories and blog posts at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself or even just get your products at the wholesale price. If that's all you desire, click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470 for more information. Okay, we're talking about um, bile and gluconidation, and then uh, before we went to break, we were talking about rooibos tea, which is actually just an herb. They call them herbal teas. Basically, you're talking just taking water and hot water and herb. Although rooibos tea has become popular enough now that it ha- there's official tea bags for it. Basically, if you took, if you go to Whole Foods or get on the internet and f- go to Frontier Herbs or Gaia Herbs or there's a million of these herb companies out there, and you just buy your favorite herbs and buy a tea bag, uh, a tea ball, which is like a steel hollow ball with holes in it, and just put your herb in there and steep it in hot water, you get herbal tea. And herbs are amazing medicine. And you know what else? There's nutrients in herbs too. They're plants, after all. They got minerals, vitamins, enzymes, antioxidants. Most herbs are going to give you some some uh, medicinal effects, anti-aging effects. That's why herbal medicine is so popular. It's very subtle. Herbal medicine is is not exact. It's not like drug medicine. It's quite subtle. Body likes subtle. Body doesn't like pharmacology. That's a, that's really the big problem with drugs. The body doesn't like drugs. Period. End of story. The body doesn't like drugs. Herbal medicine is much more subtle. The body likes subtle. If it's going to be medicinal, it's going to be subtle. The subtlest way of all, of course, to to deal with the body is nutrition. That's almost invisible. That's how subtle that is, is nutrition. Uh, Nutrition is almost like water is to a fish. The body doesn't even really notice it. It just goes right to work. Medicine is uh, kind of freaks things out. It throws off the chemistry in the body, and that's why drugs are such a big problem. Herbs are much more subtle, and you can do you can utilize uh, uh, tremendous anti-aging and disease-fighting properties with herbal medicine, or, or say herbal teas, and you can make your own. Rooibos tea happens to be very powerful, uh, a very powerful anti-inflammatory, especially for arthritis. But it's it's good for all kinds of things. It's an antioxidant. It's important for heart health. It can strengthen arteries. It can lower blood sugar. It can uh, treat diabetes. It's especially um, effective as an antispasmodic for the digestive tract. If for folks dealing with uh, IBS or colon disease, antispasmodic means that it uh, stops spasms. When spasms occur in the colon, it can cause great distress, pain, diarrhea, constipation. That's really where that's where I first started hearing about rooibos tea. Well, actually, I first started hearing about rooibos tea um, back in uh, maybe ten or fifteen years ago. Uh, there was a kind of a, was an interesting court case about ten or fifteen years ago. There was a court case that involved the uh, company that had monopolized or trademarked the name rooibos. Rooibos tea has a very interesting history. It started. Uh, well, it's Chinese, of course, uh, or not, it's not Chinese, uh, South Africans. It grows in, a, in South Africa, rooibos tea. And indigenous Bushmen had been using it for centuries. And then around the 1700s, they start to explore Africa. They start to find all these uh, indigenous things, uh, these uh, uh, medica- uh, herbal medicines and, and tinctures and like homemade ways of healing that indigenous people were using. One of the things they found was rooibos tea. And they brought it back to, uh, they brought it back to Europe. And it really kind of remained... A hidden, hidden medical treatment for, or, or medical uh, remedy, I should say, for a few hundred years, actually till World War II. World War II is really when it got going. People, soldiers came back from Europe and Asia, and they, they, or from Asia, I should say, and brought it back to Europe. And it started to become popular. Tea was hard to get. So rooibos started to become popular, but it really didn't get going until the 1960s. And, and, and still even then, it didn't, people didn't know about it. Around 1990, so a company monopolized the name Roy, or trademarked the name rooibos tea, and they got a monopoly on it. Uh, and then when it started to become popular, uh, there was a big court case where 
where a bunch of uh, uh, herbal companies got together and they defeated this trademark because the company wasn't really doing anything with the trademark and they ended up, that's how, that's where I first started hearing about rooibos tea and then started doing some research and uh, lo and behold, I discovered, man, this stuff is amazing. So I started to use it or recommend it and suggest it in my pharmacy for folks who had IBS. So it's been around for a while. And still, though, you don't hear a lot about this stuff, which is very unfortunate because it is super, super powerful stuff. Anti-inflammatory, most especially, and antispasmodic, most especially, but for a lot of things. It's a source of minerals. It's got zinc in it. It's got potassium in it. It's got calcium in it. It's got plant-derived fulvic minerals, same type of minerals that are in our mineral mist, which you'll find at truthtreatments.com. Plant-derived colloidal minerals, if you will. It builds tissue. It's a building substance. So it's, in addition to being anti-inflammatory and anti-spasmodic, it's a building substance. It can help build tissue, help build bone, helps build skin. You can apply ribose tea topically as an anti-aging treatment. It's, uh, it uh, has natural alpha hydroxy acids in it. It's a natural stimulator of collagen production. Topically, that is. You can make your own rooibos tea toner and apply it every day. Roibo, rooibos tea mask. And because it's healing, it grows tissue in addition to, it's amazing stuff, in addition to being an anti, uh, uh, and having alpha hydroxy acids and speeding up the production of collagen, it also helps heal things. So you can pop your zit. It's great for acne. The alpha hydroxy acids will help speed up the, the, uh, the growth of new skin cells and uh, the uh, healing properties will help if you pop a zit. Speed, speeds up healing. If you burn yourself, if you scrape yourself, you can make a paste of it and with some aloe and some zinc oxide maybe and, uh, or some bentonite clay. Uh, you get your own little healing poultice with rooibos tea. It's really amazing stuff, and you don't really hear much about it. Uh, it's not, you're not going to see it, you're not going to uh, see it uh, in health food stores really just yet, but you can get it on the internet. It's especially effective for kids who have colic because it's non, it's basically non, well, it is non-toxic. I mean, it's, it's herb. It's probably still got some medicinal properties, but it's pretty much non-toxic and it's, uh, doesn't have any caffeine in it. So you can use a drop, put it in a dropper and just give your kid, a, a, your baby a drop or two. If you have colic, you can use a sleep aid for adults or even for, for kids. Um, it, do, it does, it has a kind of an acquired taste. Some people like it, but if you add lemon in there or maybe some honey, it can be pretty palatable. And if you don't like the taste, just drink it as a health tonic. Particularly, particularly if you are dealing with uh, uh, any kind of digestive health issues, digestive spasms, inflammation, and glucuronidation. It's a great way to upregulate glucuronidation. So if you're dealing with autoimmune problems or estrogenic issues, PCOS, PMS, sip on a, if you have PMS, for example, just sip on some rooibos tea right around that time of the month. Maybe a couple days before you get your period, you can sip on some rooibos tea and it may, may help you with your PMS. Um, you can get it on the internet, Amazon, eBay. It's pretty available. Not in health food stores yet, but pretty available on the internet. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny. 442366010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Mo All right, we're back on The Bright Side. Thanks for being here, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Get your calls here momentarily at 844 If you're on hold, hang tight. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the bright side, call 866-735-2470. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com or Truth Retinol 5% gel, Truth Retinol 1% gel. If you can't handle the 5% gel or you want a little bump up where you want to break yourself in slowly, retinol being along with vitamin C, the most important go-to anti-aging Skin conditioning, overall skin health. It actually helps fight skin cancer and helps uh, helps protect your uh, skin from pre-skin cancer, AK, actinic keratosis, they call it. Just an amazingly, phenomenally important active ingredient. All Everything else pales in comparison. It's the gold standard of active ingredients uh, along with, as I say, vitamin C. And you'll find high concentrations of both in our Truth Treatment products. Our Truth Retinol 5% gel is way packed with retinol. Retinol 1% gel is still a good retinol dose, although not as intense. You can find our retinol products as well as our vitamin C products and our fulvic mineral biomimetic mineral mist at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. From the Journal of Dermatology, 
Eradication of H. pylori, beneficial for concurrent rosacea. H. pylori is a bacteria, very fascinating bacteria that uh, can cause, well, it's a normal bacteria actually in the body, but uh, when it overgrows or when it grows where it shouldn't be growing, it can cause problems, especially in the esophagus and in the uh, in the, uh, uh, in the digestive tract in general, in the stomach particularly. It's estimated that 50% of Americans are infected by H. pylori, and it's thought to be the cause of ulcers gastric ulcers and uh, uh, duodenal ulcers as well. I remember when I was in, when I graduated pharmacy school, everybody knew that ulcers were caused by acid, and the best-selling drugs were Tagamet and Zantac. The same Tagamet and Zantac that's over the counter now. Back in uh, 1986 was a prescription drug, and it was we were selling a lot of Zantac and a lot of Tagamet. I would say it was our best-selling drug. Uh, let me think real quick. Yeah, it was probably the best-selling drug was were Zantac and Tagamet. It was like everybody was using them. And then somewhere in the 1990s, uh, a guy won the Nobel Prize, an Australian microbiologist actually won, a no won the Nobel Prize for discovering that it was actually not acid that caused ulcers, but this little critter called H. pylori, Heliobacter pylori is the technical name, H. pylori was causing infections in the gut. And so now they give you antibiotics if you have an ulcer. According to this, this is why antibiotics are used to treat rosacea. Rosacea is a bacterial problem. Not a bacterial problem on the skin, but a bacterial problem inside the body. And that bacteria, H. pylori, thrives where there's no acid. It, it has an ability, I should say, it has an ability to, pr to proliferate in acid. And the lower, the, the less the acid, the more the H. pylori can proliferate. So it, it can handle acid. And what it does is it kills the acid-making cells in the digestive tract, in the stomach. So it can handle a little acid, and then while it's there, it kills off the, the uh, acid that's in the, the acid-making cells, and it thrives. Long story short, what you want to do if you have H. pylori, or if you have rosacea, is make sure you're acidifying your stomach. That is such a, an a critical part of digestion that no, rarely you talk, we talk about it here in this program, but you very rarely hear people talking about acidification of the digestive tract, acidification of the stomach. That's what apple cider vinegar does. And that's what the betaine HCL does, the betaine that's in our ultimate enzymes. Betaine HCL, apple cider vinegar, uh, anything that's fermented really is going to be acidic and it's going to help acidify the contents of your stomach, acidify the, the food, and it's going to help take care of H. pylori. So instead of taking an antibiotic, which is what doctors do for H. pylori, I would consider acidification strategies. Now, if you need an antibiotic, uh, you know, you do what you got to do what you got to do. There are times you need an antibiotic, but it isn't a good thing. And uh, as soon as you're, as soon as you can get off it, get off it. Now they're telling you you don't have to go through the full uh, course of therapy. They used to tell you up, up until very recently, when I was in pharmacy school, we always were, were told to make very certain that patients finished their round of antibiotic therapy. And uh, they, up until maybe five years ago, they were that was pretty much routine medical advice. Make sure you get a 10-day supply, take all 10 days. You get a, you're on a 14-day course of, of amoxicillin or whatever your antibiotic is, make sure you, you stay on it the entire 14 days. Use all the pills up. Now they're telling you, just stop when you feel better. In any case, it isn't a good idea to use, use antibiotics, but sometimes you do need them if you do need them. And you do have to take them. Make sure you're using probiotics, not at the same time, because they'll kill the antibiotics will kill the probiotics. But uh, between doses, maybe, and most certainly after you're done with your antibiotic therapy, make sure you're eating lots of fermented food, and make sure you're. Uh, getting on a good probiotic supplement like the Nightly Essence, which is great advice, no matter what your health challenges are, whether you're on antibiotics or not. Speaking of rosacea, from the Annals of Neurology, rosacea is linked to a slightly increased risk of dementia. There is a very important comorbidity factor when it comes to rosacea. Comorbidity means you have other diseases with one disease. And with rosacea, you're more likely to have arthritis. With your rosacea, you're more likely to have digestive issues. With rosacea, now you're more likely to have dementia as well. All of this shows you that rosacea is not just a skin problem. In fact, it's, it only shows up in the skin. That's the, one of the most important things we can understand about our skin is when something is on the skin, it doesn't mean it started off on the skin. In fact, only rarely, only rarely does something on the skin 
be is something on the skin be caused by something that uh, that's from the outside that's external. For the most part, with the exception of something called atopic dermatitis, atopic uh, dermatitis, is, uh, I'm sorry, with, I should say topical dermatitis, topical dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, which is eczema, is with non-topical d- dermatitis. But if you ever hear the word topical associated with your skin condition, then you're talking about maybe a, a, an allergic reaction. You can have a gluten reaction, for example. You can have something called a cement dermatitis. You can have... Uh, uh, detergent problems or latex problems or nickel problems. These are all th- t- external issues that can cause skin problems, but they're very rare. Almost always when you have a skin problem, it's internal, and that includes acne, and that includes eczema, and that includes psoriasis, and it includes rosacea, which really isn't even a skin problem. It's a blood problem. You can actually see the redness. Sometimes the, the, uh, skin, the oil cells, the sebum-making cells will get involved. And so you can have a lot of oil sometimes, but for the most part, it is a blood problem, a circulatory problem, which is very obvious. If you look at a rosacea patient, you'll see blood. You'll see the blood supply. You'll see not leaking, not blood on the skin, but you'll see blood vessels. All that is an indicator. Whenever you have vasodilation, you're, you're dealing with some kind of immune response. In the skin, that is. When you have vasodilation in the skin, when you have redness in the skin of any kind, including rosacea, which means red, you are dealing with an immune response. An immune response means that you've got the defense system activated, and the only way you're going to have the defense system activated is uh, from from the inside out is if it's in the blood somewhere. How do things get in the blood? Food. Rosacea is a digestive issue. It's a food issue. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we will get your phone calls when we come back from our break. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Time to hit the phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open. Let's go to Mississippi and say good morning to Ricky. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Welcome to the bright side. Yeah, Ben. Hard to get hey. a hold of you sometimes. But listen, I got yes, a high calcium problem. Uh, okay. Uh, it's like 11.8. I'm a is kid. it a parathyroid issue? Yes, is it, it is. A... Okay. And I, I've got a nodule on one of them. Uh, I okay. The the biggest question is, can we reverse everything from what I understand from you? We probably can, but the nodule... Well, yeah, uh, the nodule, yeah, yeah that's, that sounds like you you have chronic, some kind of a chronic calcium deficiency issue, and the parathyroid's working overtime to... Uh, Correct. Working overtime. That's what causes nodules usually when, and gross when the when a tissue is overworked, working overtime kind of thing. Uh, it could have to do with your insulin. Uh, how's your, usually it's secondary, not usually, it's always secondary. So right. what, so let me, so the primary things are going to be your blood sugar system and the digestive system. So do you have I, a history I, that way? No, I think all that's fine. How old Never are you? A problem. How old are you? 68. Okay. You definitely have a problem. You just don't know it. Okay. There's no okay. way you can be 68 in Mississippi, no less, and not have blood sugar problems. And, uh, well, I, well it's, it, it, <laughs> Something below 90. No, I know that's your. That, I should say insulin problems. Insulin controls sugar. Okay. Okay. When ins, when your sugar's normal, that doesn't tell you anything because your insulin could be going nuts to keep your sugar normal, and the chances are pretty good that's exactly what's happening. So what I'd be doing is I'd be working with the blood sugar system, stabilize it. That means no foods that spike it and nutrients that help you process it. Things like niacin, the ultimate niacin from longevity, chromium, vanadium, the sweeties. Uh, beyond tangy tangerine, all your B vitamins, uh, and then, of course, restricting your intake of foods that spike your blood sugar. And you know the drill on that one, probably. The breads and pastas and the fruits and the fruit juices, desserts, blah, 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 all those. Uh, Also, if you have any digestive issues, you want to make sure you're addressing those. Sometimes low vitamin D levels can be a problem. Now, vitamin D is... Okay, yours is too high. That's interesting. It was 37, and I got on K2 with D3. Yeah, Uh, they put... Did put you on the K2 for the? Did they put you on the K2? Uh, they gave you D3. That's what I was about to tell you. I'm not a big believer in using supplemental D vitamin D. 
All right. Now the K is great, but it's not like it's a treatment for, for if you have a parathyroid issue, it's not going to treat the problem. So the K is great, but it gets the, use to the sun to get your vitamin D and make sure you're using lots of essential fatty acids uh, with your vitamin D, ultimate EFAs, and make absolutely 100% positively sure you're getting extra vitamin A. Vitamin A and D go together. You don't want to take one without the other. Right. You don't have a calcium problem, though. You've got a parathyroid problem, I'm thinking, uh, or, or secondary to a calcium problem i guess you did they tell you what do they, they don't want to take it out do they yeah yeah they, they signed me up uh, they want to they want to take out the parathyroid take, they, want take, they want to take out three and a half out of four i, I they would definitely uh, now have you had your kidneys checked well the kidneys are you know my bun is, is you know it's always a little high it's like 28 yeah and see now if you have a kidney problem if you have a kidney issue that's going to affect calcium your problem could be in the kidneys and the kidneys are about blood sugar, blood sugar and insulin. So your problems could be in that. that. Go ahead. That's the kidney I got to transplant. I didn't Oh, well, you didn't tell me that. Of course. Okay, that's I thought I mentioned you, for, right you forgot to mention that. Okay. Of course. That's where your problem is. Your problem's in the kidney. Yeah, no, that's, you got a kidney issue, and that's probably following the blood sugar problem. Work on the blood sugar is what I would be telling you. All right. Now, you have a, you have a new kidney, a kidney transplant? Yeah, about six years ago. Okay, so what did you have? You had, must have had big-time kidney disease. You're only 68. So at 62, they had, you had a kidney transplant? It, well, at 60. At 60. So I've had so it. So why was your kidney, why, what was wrong with the kidney? That was so, Nobody knows. Yeah, Nobody knows. Hey, blood sugar. Yeah, blood sugar. Uh -huh. I'm guessing your blood sugar, sir. That's where I'd be working. Yeah, it, that's where your issue is. It's in the kidney. So of the blood sugar. With, with, I'm assuming the kidney, when you have a kidney transplant, it probably doesn't, but it works close to normal. Uh, I'm assuming it's close to normal. Work on your kidney health. I would be doing the, uh, the blood, whole blood sugar thing. That's what I'd be focusing on. All right, Ricky? Okay. I hope that helps you. Any, and uh, anything else? Or if you want to write me, you can write me to Ben at KSCO.com. Okay, I'll do that then. Thanks. All right, Ricky. T take care, man. All right. Let's go to uh, Carol in South Carolina. Hey, Carol, in South Carolina. Hey, ben, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. What's up? I, uh, my husband was diagnosed last week uh, with stage one melanoma, a small, oh, tiny mole on his back. Okay. And, and the doctor said, I spoke to her directly, the surgeon. She says, we could do it in my office next Thursday, which is in two days. And she says he doesn't need to have any chemo or radiation because it's Good. so Tiny. so new that we she caught it in time. However, uh, my husband is diabetic now for thirty five years, so okay. if that has anything to do with it, how it has a lot can to we do with prevent? It. Yes, I good question. That. Good question. Yep. Melanomas yep. occur when the body is weak. That's basically okay. how. That's what happens with cancer. That's how cancer happens. It's a sign that the body is not. It, it's taxed. It's stressed. It's biochemically okay. stressed. I'm not talking about psychological stress. I'm talking about biochemically no, I, stressed. It's in duress. There's only a few things that cause duress from a physical perspective. You got to factor in the psychological for sure, and the mental, and the emotional, and the spiritual. I'm not marginalizing those, but I don't want right. to get into that just because you know that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about nutrition. So, from a physical perspective, it occurs in a body under duress. Insulin and sugar are major duresses on the body. High insulin and high sugar. So it uh, it goes hand in hand with diabetes. So you got to keep that under control. If he's not under control, he may think sometimes when you have these things, you know, you think you're doing okay. And if you have a little this, a little that, you don't notice it too much, but the body notices it. And in the, uh -huh. over the course of time, these kinds of stresses accrue. So what you got to do is you got to focus on the blood sugar system. All right. And uh -huh. that means all the things, you know, all the usual stuff, restrict your intake of sugars, which depress the immune system on their own. Uh, aside from the fact that they tax the body, uh, use, use, uh, uh, blood sugar stabilizing nutrients, the chromium, vanadium, magnesium, uh, ultimate niacin, selenium. There's a zillion of them, but focus that way. Any stressors that come into the body through the digestive system can be problematic. So uh, food toxins, patch up the gut, probiotics, just general things. This is really interesting and important, Carol, because what I'm telling you here is things that I have to do and you have to do, not just your husband. Right. He just has to right. do it with more vigilance and awareness and his therapeutic window. His, his window, his body's tolerance window is smaller than ours. We can tolerate more. He can't tolerate as much. He yeah, can't but you know what's interesting is yeah. that 
I am like on the other end of the spectrum. I've talked to you several times about this. All I do is green smoothies. Yeah. I am I have tons of supplements, which I try yeah. to give him as well. Yeah. Um, I am like on the other end. I don't eat any carbs. What do you mean? I mean what do you tell him? So what do you mean by that? Are you, are you doing okay? Are you healthy? What I'm saying is he doesn't want to do that. He, he wants well, me to eat stuff. And I, this look, is, sweetheart, Carol, I can't tell you, you know, that's, that's, people get to make whatever they, the decision they get to I make, know. they get to do their own. You know, he's your husband and that's the thing when you marry or when you have children, you're yeah. attached to his bad decisions, you know, right. you're, we're codependent on our loved ones because their bad decisions are going to hurt us too. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have kids. Yes, it's, I do. Yeah, so you know, what I'm, you know what I mean, right? And that's yes, just the truth. That's just what happens when you interact with people and you're in relationships with people. You form, you get become entangled with their bad decisions. But that doesn't mean we get to impose our vision or our viewpoint on them. You know, right. we have I to. Know. Yeah. You have to deal. You got to deal with it on your own. You can't impose. He doesn't care. So what are you going to do? He doesn't care. So he doesn't care. You love him anyway, of course, and you help him, but you don't, the last thing anybody wants is a nag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the, the yeah. worst thing you could do is make somebody feel guilty or pressure people. I, I never do that. When, I'm, when people well, call I me up and they want to continue on my good therapy, that's all. You continue, that's love all. him, I, sneak in some right. vitamins here and there, sneak some BTT yeah. in, his, in his vodka or whatever, you know, right. if you can get that in there. <laughs> no, yeah. he doesn't drink, thank God. <laughs> all right. Well, whatever you can do, sneak it in there, Give him, make him broccoli every day with butter and salt. And, you know, yeah. there's ways you can do it, but nobody wants to be nagged. And nobody wants right. a guilt trip, right? That's the worst thing you can right. do, especially if it's a husband-wife relationship. Well, how can, can I prevent anything going forward? I mean, just take those vitamins, that, like you suggested, the supplements? You have to let him know that it's a sign that his body is weak. It's a sign okay. that his body's in duress. It's a sign that his body is, ma is hurt. It's a sad body. It's a sign of a sad body. And you're not he going to believe this. He's only 56. That's terrible. That's terrible. And it's not it's, good. It is, of course aside it's from terrible. the guilt, aside from the fact that, you know, you, you don't want to be guilt, make him feel guilty, but aside from the fact that he's going to, he has, a, there's a lot of stuff down the road that's going to be very unpleasant for both him and you. It's just a sign that his body's not happy. Why is he not loving his body? Why is, why is he abusing his body like that? His body is an independent organ. I don't know. And I, I love mine. I'm like on the you other gotta end. You got to love your body. It's a question of loving yep. your body. All right. I got to go, Leslie. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Sorry if I let you on hold. Uh, call back tomorrow and we'll get your first up, tell our call screener, and that's all the time we have on the Bright Side. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.